Namaste and I welcome all the student teachers to the course Knowledge and Curriculum. The first unit of Knowledge and Curriculum deals with the concept and nature of curriculum and this is the second module which helps you in knowing what about what knowledge is, meaning, definition and characteristics. Being teachers, it is very important for us to understand what, what knowledge is. And this module is being presented by Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head School of Education, Base Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. Now, it is very important for us just to know in depth about the nature of knowledge because we dwell in the field of knowledge. We deal with the different forms of knowledge and we are supposed to do in the field of um, to make students gain the, this knowledge. Unless we know what it is, we will not be able to su be successful in, in our endeavor. It is very important for us teachers to know in depth about the nature of knowledge because we dwell in the field of knowledge. We deal with different forms of knowledge and we are supposed to make students gain this knowledge. Unless we know what it is, we will not be successful in our endeavor. How to understand the nature of knowledge? We Maybe the following three major questions will help us to understand the nature of knowledge. What does the knowledge consist of? And what are the different forms of knowledge? And what are the characteristics of knowledge? Let us start with the first question. What does knowledge consist of? Knowledge consists of many aspects. For example, we teach students that air contains different gases. Tamil Nadu is in the southern part of India. A society is a group of people living in a single geographical area and there are many principles of democracy. Forests can be divided or classified into different types. Actions and reactions are equal and opposite, etc. What are all these? All these can be called as knowledge. You may find among these examples facts, principles, concepts, laws, theories, etc. These are the I mean these are the contents of knowledge, or we can say knowledge is made up of these facts, principles, concepts, etc. Understanding each of these elements will clarify the nature of knowledge in depth. We may experience teaching each of these in our class. Sometimes we may teach any one of this in our class or a combination of these. What are facts? Thick clouds that brings things. Milk in white color is white in color. And animals have four legs are the facts. And a fact is something that is known to have happened or to exist. Especially something for which proof exists or uh, about which there is information. Natural laws arises from the process known as the scientific method. The law does not explain why a phenomenon exists or what causes it. The animal with the trunk is an elephant and this is the concept of an elephant which is different from other animals. Concepts are mental representations or abstract objects or abilities which make up the fundamental building blocks of our thoughts and beliefs. We have the concept of a good student, poor student, Weak student, bold student, mild student and many more types of students. Along with these uh, attributes, that is facts and concepts, we are familiar about one more aspect of knowledge. We teach principles of our constitution. We teach principles of our constitution, principles of democracy, Archimedes principle, etc. And we are aware of it. What do these principles mean? Principles or fundamental truths or propositions that serve as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. It can also be explained as an idea or a rule that explains or controls how something works, that is Archimedes principle, etc. Apart from these ingredients, knowledge has one more aspect, one more important aspect. You teach about the law of gravitational force, law of conservation of energy, etc. And laws are the descriptions of an observed natural phenomenon that always appears to be true. It is empirically tested and based on observation only. Of course, natural laws are different from the societal laws. And societal laws define the conduct between human beings and are determined through prevent, uh, governing bodies. Natural laws are determined by the fundamental forces within nature. The natural laws, laws arise from the process known as the scientific method 
and the law does not explain why a phenomenon exists or what causes it. The explanation of a phenomenon leads to another significant attribute of knowledge known as theory and theory answers the questions why. Why our social world is the way it is and we then, the, uh, then imagine how it might be changed we are theorizing. This implies that theorizing involves a combination of description, reflection and application. Theories enable us to see things from new angles, understand in depth the relationship between our subject and social life. Any explanation or cannot become a theory instantly. A theory comes into being when a series of ideas come to be accepted by a wider community of the people. It is based on how one views the world rather than the actual facts. There are three important foundations of education. The first one is ontological, which is related to the nature of knowledge. And the second one is epistemetic, which is also related to the theory of knowledge. And the third one is axiological, and that is related to values. Of these three, ontological, epistemetic and the axiological, epistemetic foundation is the most fundamental one, and we are going to deal with that. Knowledge can refer to a theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. It can be implicit or explicit and it can be more or less formal or systematic. Information and knowledge are growing at a far more hastily pace than ever before in the history of humankind. More than ever, the sheer magnitude of human knowledge renders its coverage by education an impossibility. Rather, the goal of education is better conceived as helping students develop the intellectual tools and learning strategies needed to acquire the knowledge that allows people to think productively. Another important thing that we have to remember is that philosophy implies both process of seeking wisdom and wisdom itself. This wisdom is nothing but theoretical and practical knowledge, problems of life and universe, which is derived out of systematic and critical and universe and beyond and seeking the same becomes the goal of life. Now let us look into the concept of knowledge. The chamber of dictionary answers the question for what knowledge is as the fact of knowing, information of or what is known or the whole of what can be learned or found out. Further, it is also knowledge as assured belief that which is known, information, instruction, learning, enlightenment, practical skill and acquaintance. Considering all the above that are worthy of knowing, a term widely used by teachers, educators and policy makers is concept of knowledge and it refers to the body of information that teachers teach and that students are expected to learn in a given subject or content area such as English, language, arts, mathematics, science or social studies. Concept of knowledge generally refers to the facts, concepts, theories and principles that are taught and learned rather than related to skills such as reading, writing and or researching that student also learns in academic courses. Now let us understand the importance of knowledge. Being teachers, it is very important for us to understand the importance of knowledge. Knowledge is not truth. Truth is inferred on the basis of available knowledge. The truth about the universe around us or the mac macrocosm to the macrocosm is inferred knowledge. The knowledge of galaxy is inferred, so is the whole nuclear science, space, DNA, etc. Much of what we know is not observed knowledge. They are known through their effects, properties and characteristics. It is at the stage of inference that employment of methods or drawing inferences that philosophy is at work. Knowledge certified by the philosophy enters the curriculum of education. Methods approved by philosophy for building knowledge from the basis of methods and techniques of teaching. The truth arrived by philosophy sets the goals and objectives of education as well as instruments and uses of evaluation. Like this, knowledge helps philosophy to uh, interpret, guide, monitor and validating the educational process of at every stage. Let us move on to understand the nature of knowledge. Epistemology is the theory of knowledge and it helps with the knowledge as a universal matter 
and aims to discover what is involved in the process of knowing. As such, it belongs to the more for the most part of the critical or analytical aspects of philosophy. Is there something common to all different uh, activities to which we apply the term knowing? Does it know a special uh, sort of uh, mental act? Can we anything uh, beyond the objects with which our senses acquaint us? Does anything make any difference? Does knowing make any difference to the object? No. These are the idle, not idle questions. For if we can know what the knowledge we process is beyond, we, pro, we possess is beyond. These are not idle questions. For if we can know that the knowledge we possess is beyond error, that knowledge becomes a foundation of our search for more of it. Admittedly, it may folly to believe that we shall ever discover true knowledge when all when all we have ever known is only an approximation of it. Doubtful knowledge then only generates more doubtful knowledge. At Santyaina no wrote Knowledge is a touch of a smoky pine that lights path away the pathway but one step ahead across a void of mystery and dread. Still we must uh, strive, though a step at a time, to understand as well as we are, we can, the source of it. We shall be in a better position to understand the true nature of that reality to which it is related. Unlike philosophy, epistemology is not interested in amassing and classifying facts and data and subjecting them to statistical process. The epistemologist has ideas about knowledge, about how people think and feel, but he does not claim, any epistemologist does not claim to be able to explain them scientifically. The epistemologists, after all, are philosophers, philosophers are not the social scientists. The epistemologists may possess all the information commonly described as a knowledge, but still he will ask the question, what is knowledge after all? And epistemologist may not come up with uh, an answer. The epistemologist may examine or relevant uh, psychological concepts such as perception, memory and reinforcement to determine whether they are consistent, not necessarily with actual factual matters, but with themselves. Knowing the uh, psychological problems, it is to state and assess the very grounds on which the knowledge rests and claims to knowledge are made. There are of course different types of knowledge and they are important. Let us now move on to the definitions of knowledge. According to Merriam Webster, the fact or condition of knowing something with familiarity gained through experience or association and acquaintance with or understanding of a science, art or technique, the fact or condition of being aware of something is knowledge. Uh, uh, said by Albert Einstein. Knowledge is experience. Everything else is just information said by Albert Einstein in 1955. And uh, knowledge is information in action according to Odiel and Grayson in the year 1998. Knowledge is information given meaning and integrated with other contents of understanding. The meanings of knowledge is given by the Random House Dictionary and words synonyms with knowledge etc. Acquaintance with the facts of principles uh, as from the study of uh, or investigation, general tradition, familiarity or conservance as with the particular subject or branch of knowing, learning. Acquaintance or familiarity gained by sight, experience or report as for example knowledge of human nature. The fact of state, the fact or state of knowing, clear and certain perception of fact or truth, awareness of a fact or, a, or circumstance that which is may or may not be known, information and the body of truths or facts accumulated by mankind in the course of time as for example man's knowledge of the moon. The word synonyms with knowledge are enlightenment, information, understanding, discernment, comprehension, judgment, wisdom. Another approach to define knowledge is the word knowledge has notes in the Greek word genesis. A word that uses the same root is recognized. We know that we, what we recognize. This means 
that this means that we mentally process process our experience shaping it and giving it mental forms that we can identify so we recognize experience and bring it in the into the realm of knowledge daniel bell the harvard university professor of sociology while discussing comprehensive definition of knowledge is as follows knowledge is an organized set of uh, statement or fact of uh, ideas presenting a reasoned judgment or an experimental result which is transmitted to others through some communication medium is some systematic form knowledge consists of new judgments that is research and scholarship or presentation of older judgments or exemplified in textbooks teaching and learning and collected as library and archival material does it know a special sort of mental act can be anything beyond the objects with which our senses acquaint us does knowing make any difference to the object no there are not idle questions these are not idle questions for if we can know that the knowledge we possess is beyond error that knowledge becomes the foundation of our search for more of it admittedly it may fully uh, to believe that we shall ever discover true knowledge when all we have ever known is only an approximation of it doubtful knowledge then only generates more doubtful knowledge as santayana wrote knowledge is a torch of smoky spine that lights the pathway but one step ahead across a void of mystery and dread still we must try though, though a step at a time to understand as well as we can the source of it we shall be in a better position to understand the true nature of that reality to which it is related unlike philosophy epistemology is not interested in amassing and classifying facts and data and subjecting them to statistical process the epistemologist has ideas about how people think and feel about does not about but he does not claim to be an able to explain them scientifically let us look into the characteristics of knowledge knowledge is contextual and it can be reused benefits of knowledge obtained only if it is applied the value of knowledge can may change over the time our knowledge has to be renewed or maintained it can be difficult to transfer capture and distribute knowledge depends on memory past experience and expertise knowledge transfer mechanisms and opportunities facilitates effectiveness and sense making a knowledge enables uh, higher learning a knowledge creation and utilization is enhanced with technology let us look into the importance of knowledge knowledge is not truth truth is inferred on the basis of available knowledge the truth about the universe around us or the macrocosm to the macrocosm is inferred knowledge the knowledge of galaxy is inferred so is the whole nuclear science space dna etc much of what we knew is not observed knowledge they are known through their effects properties and characteristics it is at the stage of inference that employment of methods and for inferences that philosophy is at work 